I'm Esther, I work for Made.com, a UK company uh, that uh, design and sell home furniture online and in other parts of Europe as well. And I also a PyCon Italia organizer and developer. I recently joined to Strawberry GraphQL as a core dev and uh, also as a Poetry Packer manager contributor. So with this organization, I have seen a lot of tools and automation that I think they are really great and help to have a better developer experience. So today, I would like to show them to you. And oh, uh, we have sale, by the way. And so you can go on Made.com and check if you like something. And I should also mention that uh, my team has recently uh, fixed a little thing that uh, about uh, um, Ireland postcode validation. So now we can ship also to Ireland and other countries. So go check online, please. So have you ever been in this situation when so you're working on a feature, you are writing some code, and I think you really need, I, you finish your work, the tasks are passing locally, so you are uh, ready to commit your code and push your code. And at this point, uh, I think we have some time to kill because the pipeline can took a while. So we can uh, go out for a walk, uh, relaxing, get distracted. At some point, we will remember that we have to work. And we will go back on the pipeline and see that everything is, is red. We forgot to run the linters locally, so the pipeline uh, warned us that the code quality is not reached. And it's a silly thing, and we should have learned our lesson. And next time, we will remember to run the linters. But the truth is that we will probably forgot anyway at some point. Also because sometimes you do a silly change that doesn't, shouldn't change so much. But it's that silly change that, bre that breaks black or, or eyesort. So we probably uh, wasted a bit of time because uh, the pipeline took a while because we never optimized Docker, so on. Anyway, we can optimize a bit the stuff and introduce our first tool, that is uh, Precommit. Precommit is a multi-language package manager for Precommit hooks, and it will run automatically on every commit, before every commit. So we have just to create a little bit of configuration, and there is a nice command, a sample config that we create for you, and we have to run precommit install. So this is our configuration file. Uh, you can see there is uh, the repo, there is the version, because precommit will install uh, the stuff in a separate environment, and everyone in your team will have, will have the same version. And yeah, and there, there are the ID of the hooks. So there are many things you can add to your programming configuration, and I think in a Python repo, you should always add at least black isort and flakate or pylint. But there are many, and the list is very long, and you can check online. Uh, those are some of my favorite. So there is PyUpgrade that automatically upgrades the syntax to a newer version of Python. So our code is up to date, and hopefully it will be a bit uh, faster. And there is uh, like Eradicate, so that will notify us that we left some commented code. And the last one is a nice one because uh, Flakeate or PyLint only tell you that you, there is a missing, uh, there is an unused import or unused variables, but they didn't, they didn't uh, remove it for you. Instead, out of Flake, we removed it automatically. 
So what else we can add? The list is long, but it's not always about good quality. It's also for our safety, because there are some dangerous stuff, some secret, oops, i sorry. Mm, yeah, this is the correct one. So uh, it's also for our safety because uh, we are very careful to not commit uh, some secrets and dangerous stuff, but the truth is that when it's committed, it's kind of too late because you will leave it there kind of forever in your history somewhere. So this is just an example of what type of stuff you can add to your checks. But why we should add pre-commit? So I'm trying to, to answer this question. And one of the benefits is because it will help to identify the silly issues like uh, uh, leaving some debug statement in the code or missing a new line at the end of the code. Also because this stuff uh, always only appears during the code review because GitHub did a very good job to emphasize that you're missing a new line at the end of the code with this tiny icon. Uh, and so in my organization there are, I think, a lot of these comments. And if you use pre-commit, uh, um, they will, you will remove earlier, so we can concentrate only on what matters, so the core review, the code, what will really change. Also, to me, it's a bit awkward sometimes when I say this little mistake, because I wonder myself, should I bother to notify the author, or I should look in another, in another way, because the work will, the, the code will work anyway. So maybe I already comment a lot of stuff in the pull request, they speak, and yeah. So we can avoid this stuff. Also, it's because uh, our day, nowadays, uh, we have a lot of code, it is not only Python, we have uh, no matter if you have a monorepo or uh, microservices, we have Python, we have Terraform, infrastructure, or Ansible, some bash uh, scripts, uh, some markdown, because we have a documentation, um, JSON file for, for fixer, anything. So it's multi-language, so you can add a hook for, to format any code that is going to be read. And um, yeah, so I try to ask myself why people don't like it, because of course I'm a bit biased because I love this tool, so it's difficult for me to identify why. And uh, I wrote a tweet and maybe my bubble already use it. Anyway, I think uh, one of the main reason is because people think it is slow but I don't think it's the case because, of course, the first time you add the pre-commit to your uh, uh, repo and you promote all your code base, of course, that can take a while. Uh, but uh, normally, it will take only a few seconds, uh, especially because um, uh, it's uh, incremental. So you pre-commit will run only on the code that you are about to commit. And also because, for example, if you commit some Terraform code, it will run only the hook for Terraform, and not for Python. So it's, it's very quick. Anyway, it can be that some hooks are slower than others. For example, uh, PyLint, uh, uh, MyPy. Um, that hooks that has to analyze the code can be slower, of course and you can skip it, or you can run one at a time. You can skip there entirely, and it's okay anyway. For example, if you're doing pair programming and you commit frequently, you don't want to bother to the code quality, so it's okay. Uh, you can run later if you want. Um, yeah, so there are options to mitigate if there is this problem. Um, also, I should mention that they add a manual stage. So by default, pre-commit will run on every stage. There is not only commit. 
there is a pre-commit, uh, post, post uh, commit, uh, pre-merge, post-merge. There are a lot of them. And they introduce it in one stage, so if you have something that you have to run only once in a while, you can run it manually. And this is, is a nice feature. And yeah, the only thing now that we have to remember is to run precommit install when you clone the repo. Uh, the only thing. We can potentially avoid if we do a nice uh, trick. So if you add uh, um, uh, a JIT template in your home uh, uh, directory, in your JIT home default directory. So a JIT template is, um, so when you clone or initialize a repo, there are some files that will be copied from this default directory of JIT into your .JIT directory. So you can add a little script in your default directory and it will be copied and it will install pre-commit for you. So uh, after, you don't have to remember anything. And if the repo you clone doesn't have pre-commit, uh, doesn't use pre-commit, you will just print uh, something and leave it there. So, cool. So I think one specification is needed because uh, using pre-commit or non-using pre-commit is your a personal choice, so you should not force your team to use it if they don't want it. And I think at the end of the day, whatever makes you productive, uh, it's okay. So uh, choose what you do, every commit, every push. There are many options, whatever fit to you, for you, it's okay. So, whatever we, what else we can do? We can run, of course, on our pipeline uh, because we want to check, uh, double check the code quality, of course. And there is also pre-commit CI. And, and it's, it's nice because pre-commit CI can also edit the code for you. So you can also fix the, the hooks. So check it out. And I think uh, for public repo, it's, it's free. Um, yeah. What else? So if you, like me, in your organization have a make file in your project, so every team can decide what to put inside the make file, so we ended up with a bunch of commands uh, that they do always basically the same thing anyway. So at this point, if we have pre-commit, I don't think we use them anymore. So we can clean up our long May file, and yeah, clean it up. Um, mm -hmm. So we have one tool to run the all, and that means that we have a lot of hooks now. So every hooks need a little bit of configuration and this configuration is stored in a file and usually in your root directory. So that means if we have a bunch of dot, uh, uh, file, dot .csv in your root. So we can think about cleaning up also the repo and your root and move it in a special file called pyproject.tom. So what is pyproject.tom? Um, so at the, at the beginning of Python, there was only one tool to build packages, but after some point, uh, setup tools came out and created some issues. So uh, this PEP 518 managed to solve these issues, and uh, after, every project can specify which build system they want to use. There are many. Um, but it wasn't matter for us. It's because um, there, there is also a special session for tools, so we can add there uh, the configurations. Not every tool allows to, you to use PyProject. Many of them are already uh, integrated, this functionality. Uh, other ones are uh, developing uh, uh, or migrating to this, but you should check their documentation if they support or not. 
Um, I talk about specifically about uh, PyProject.tom because I want to introduce another build system that I think it's amazing, and it's called uh, Poetry Packer Manager, and it's an all-in-one tool to manage dependency, virtual environment, packaging, versions. So. Um, some languages like Go or Rust uh, uh, has a tool that manages all the aspects of your project, but Python doesn't have a, a tool like this built in. Uh, instead, Poetry managed to compensate this. And what does it mean for you? It means that you can delete the setup UI, that is deprecated, by the way. Requirements, uh, set up CFG, and others, other uh, um, file that you have. And I have only one pyproject.file. So how it look, it look like this. Hope you see it. So you can see at the beginning there is some information about the metadata, um, the description, the versioning. We have the dependency, the specification of the dependency, and they are grouped by the production dependency above and um, below the dev dependency. These are only the primary dependencies, so those you add to your project. Because when you install, when you do poetry.install, it will create another file called poetry.lock. In there, you have this exact specific version of your dependency. So in your team, when someone install uh, the project, it will, will have the same versions uh, that you have. So this is easy to debug the stuff. Okay, I should mention that uh, Poetry 1.2 is coming very soon, hopefully. And in, we'll introduce some nice feature like uh, group dependency. So until now, you have only the production, a dev dependency, and extra dependency. After that, you can uh, uh, decide how to name your group, how to group and name your dependency. So you can create the test dependency, the um, uh, docs dependency, deploy dependency, whatever. It also has a plugin system, so it means you can customize this tool on your needs. So it's very interesting and very looking forward to this. And uh, yeah, this is how uh, it looks like. Uh, it's poetry install. It's very fast because it's parallelized. And there are many commands. Uh, so poetry add with add dependency, poetry update, poetry run, your, for example, if you do poetry run Python, your script will run the script in your envi environment without the need to activate your environment. And this is kind of cool because you don't have to activate and wait. Can can be slow. My, I'm very slow when I have to activate the environment. So this is really great. And of course, you can uh, um, publish the package uh, if you have a library on PyPy just with a simple command. So, yeah, uh, the very last thing I have to say is that uh, JetBrains uh, has done a survey recently. Hope you can see it, it's wide enough. But yeah, there are many questions in it uh, regarding the development, and uh, it's very interesting. I was very surprised to see how much people are using Poetry already for dependency, for packaging, for uh, a lot of stuff, for virtual environment. Uh, so it's it kind, I think, the third tools depends on, on the need, uh, depends on what you are looking for. But yeah, it's pretty great, I think. Okay, I don't know what's happening. But I finished uh, my talk. I don't know why it's not out. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, leave it there. Thank you so much for your attention.